as for the moment, we can move on to our next speaker. Um, Alex Dolgoff. Uh, Alex is an acknowledged business strategy consultant, uh, as well as an investment consultant with great experience in IT, project management, fundraising, and of course, blockchain technology. And Alex is going to tell us today um, about the peculiarities uh, of gold tokenization. So please, Alex, take the floor. Hi, so uh, my name is Alex Dolgoff. I'm uh, head of consulting at Pixelplex. Uh, today, as Anastasia said, I'm going to talk about jurisdiction shopping for gold tokenization uh, projects. Um, my, I actually wrote my first white paper on um, gold tokenization about three years ago. And I came across this very interesting uh, issue that in essence, gold is a very uh, much regulated um, subject matter for trading and tokenization. Uh, and it's quite peculiar as well, because it's in essence, it's a, one of the oldest um, trading mediums and uh, uh, securitizing gold and trading physical gold uh, is different in every country and differs from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Uh, however, we live in a new information age uh, and now uh, we don't have to be physically present uh, within the location of the business that we run. So we have the freedom to choose uh, a jurisdiction for the project. Uh, and uh, we could do that based on the, the requirements for the project, uh, and in particular, the regulation and other important aspects of, this, of a particular jurisdiction. It's a very important decision to, to take early on uh, to make early on simply because um, it has a lot of uh, implications in terms of the way the business is run as well as the technology because all of these um, regulational and other aspects of of different jurisdictions uh, they, they all uh, could be expressed in the different ways of solving problems at the technology level therefore i uh, at Pixelplex, we conducted the research and analyzed different jurisdictions uh, and the problems that need to be dealt with before uh, you set out, uh, before, before you plan uh, your gold tokenization pro project. So uh, the considerations that you need to take are in essence uh, fourfold. First, you need to take into account the regulation. Uh, it's important to run the business in a fully compliant manner. So you need to take into account who is the regulator, what are the rules for paper gold or for physical gold if you want to actually uh, ship uh, and uh, arrange deliveries of the gold. Uh, you also need to take into account the taxation because in some jurisdictions there could be taxes on, for example, physical gold. So when you do uh, deliver, a gold bar for somebody who redeemed their token, uh, you have to charge, uh, for example, value added tax at the source, uh, and that should be expressed in, in, in the technological solution, because otherwise it would be quite you know, difficult to do uh, those operations manually off chain or outside the system as a whole. Uh, and those requirements could be different from region to region and from country to country. Also, another very important aspect is uh, the ease of doing business. For example, um, uh, a lot of things are allowed in Switzerland. However, the actual uh, legal services are quite expensive, and some of the operations with paper may require, uh, with paper gold, may require, in some cantons, may require uh, a public notary. And that could be a hindrance uh, for the project or, you know, some additional paperwork may be required uh, that cannot be done uh, using blockchain at the moment in a certain jurisdiction. Uh, so usually ease of doing business translates into uh, costs and also translates into the time that it takes uh, to deliver the project. Uh, and another very important factor to consider is infrastructure. Obviously, if you want to trade gold in, one sh in, in some shape or form, you need a good vaulting facility. Uh, you need to, if you want to deliver your gold to your uh, users, you also need to have a specialized transportation services. 
Also, you need uh, financial services because there is also always a banking component and transactional financial uh, financial transaction component to the system. There are also network requirements. You can't have your um, voting facility somewhere, let's say, in the North Pole, where there is, there is no internet. Um, uh, and also, you need to have uh, sometimes specialized skills. Uh, you know, for example, you need a special auditors and uh, uh, multilingual support services uh, that have to be at the location and, and basically need to take into account all of these things. Excuse me, the next one. So um, all of these aspects, they, they just uh, boil down to the assessment that, that you need to make. First, you need to assess whether your project is entirely feasible. So in some jurisdictions, uh, gold trading uh, is problematic or sometimes even illegal uh, without the government authorization. So you would need to have an appropriate licensing uh, from the uh, government, which is not prohibitive uh, and is, is not, you know, uh, would not stop the project in its tracks. Uh, also, there must be the appropriate infrastructure that I just described. At, at the uh, jurisdiction that you choose. Uh, so they have to be good financial services. Uh, you have to be able to um, conduct your financial operations and gold transportation and uh, have to be a good internet infrastructure. Uh, also you need to consider costs, uh, which is rather obvious. Because um, they, they, for example, have a brilliant idea uh, but the cost of setting up, for example, the cost of um, uh, integrating with the vaulting facility uh, or the cost of uh, transportation or specialized skills that you require, like special audits, uh, is uh, very high. So your entire business model could be off balance uh, and uh, you would incur necessary expenses, even if the project is entirely feasible. And also you need to see how... Um, how competitive the project is within, uh, in terms of costs, within the jurisdiction and within the um, within the market that you want to uh, operate in, uh, and then the last aspect is the technology because you you have to have the technology that reflects all of the aspects. Uh, um, regulatory compliance, uh, you know, uh, financial transactions, um, all of those aspects, they, they have to be uh, incorporated within the technology because if you want to uh, create a um, competitive uh, project in such a competitive space as uh, gold trading, it has to work and perform at the best possible level, because otherwise uh, you will just lose the competition. So you need to consider all of these three aspects. Uh, so the next one. So the actual criteria, uh, then you could create a matri matrix for yourself uh, before you set out to create a blockchain uh, gold tokenization project. And then you could uh, add the following uh, criteria to that particular matrix. So you need to take into account the regulation of paper and physical gold. Uh, so who regulates uh, the paper gold? Who regulates the physical gold? What are the standards and what applications do you need to apply for and what licenses do you need to have? Uh, so an, another aspect is blockchain regulation. It, it's not always possible uh, to actually record ownership of an asset uh, on blockchain. Sometimes uh, you have to, um, it's avoid, uh, even if it's not possible, it's avoidable, but you would have to have a separate register of ownership, but it makes project, it could make project quite impractical to do. Then another aspect is financial services. Uh, the better the financial service sector is developed, the easier it is to do business uh, in that particular country and it's easier to set up uh, that project because you would want to integrate uh, various banking and financial services with your project if you're trading gold. Because you would need to take, uh, you would need to have a custody service, you would need to process transactions, you would need to integrate your blockchain systems uh, with the, some financial systems or availability of APIs could be a great benefit. 
um, as well as the transparency of the of the banking sector, how uh, the, its performance, because you can't possibly allow to um, do your financial transactions or and other banking in custody uh, with a bank that would fail, because that that ultimately would spell a disaster for the uh, for the project. Also, need to take into account uh, taxation because there could be taxes, uh, value added taxes or sales taxes on physical gold. Then uh, transactions with paper gold or securities in general could be taxed. You know, there could be like, uh, if you take uh, the example of the United Kingdom, there could be a tax duty, stamp duty, for example, for various. Um, transactions with securities, but it would not apply for uh, certain types of goals, but then you need to understand whether, uh, how, what would be the treatment from the tax uh, service of your particular uh, token. So we need to take this into account. Uh, then uh, gold vaulting and transportation. So if you want to, to uh, vault gold uh, at, a, uh, uh, at a vaulting facility, uh, you, you may need to integrate with their reporting. Uh, you may need to, because uh, you would be accountable in essence, whether the uh, gold which is, uh, that you tokenized, whether the appropriate, whether the same amount of gold is, is in your name in the vault or whether it's allocated or unallocated gold, uh, you still need to prove uh, that this gold exists. Therefore, you need to work closely with the vaulting facility and provide various levels of certification and audit that this gold exists. Also you need to have a developed legal and accounting services uh, system because uh, there would be, uh, you know, first of all, you'd need to set up. Uh, so you would need to have a specialized uh, legal services to do that. Uh, also, there could be some special reporting, statutory reporting, reporting to the regulators, uh, specialized accounting audits, depending on the jurisdiction. So you need to judge whether the services, legal and accounting services are appropriate for what you're trying to achieve. And ultimately, ease of doing business. This is very important because if the business is not easy to do, uh, you could still do it, but that means that, first of all, uh, the cost would increase because you would require uh, to perform a lot more actions in order to achieve your business goals. And the time scale would change as well. And there also would, could, you know, there could be some unexpected issues that you can't predict in your business plan or your business model. So this is a very important uh, thing. Uh, to take into account, although it's, it's pretty subjective and uh, although there are some uh, indexes, uh, for example, World Bank is of doing business index where, which you could rely on, it would not give you the full picture and it's best to consult uh, with, uh, with local consultants or uh, look up for the experiences of people who are trying to achieve similar goals. Uh, and just uh, see how they were get, getting on and you know negative news spread really really fast on 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 the internet uh, so you, you could uh, look them up and see how other people are doing and uh, what kind of problems uh, they, they've encountered when the, while they were doing similar kind of projects so what we also did we've analyzed based on the, on the criteria that just outlined that I've just outlined we analyzed a number of uh, more, more or less more popular jurisdictions um, and uh, we analyzed them and produced some some results so the first is the united kingdom so in the united kingdom the all gold securities are not regulated by the financial conduct authority uh, is because traditionally uh, the English common law regulates uh, the uh, such transactions. Um, and uh, the London Bullion Market Association provides uh, co the code of practice and various other standards in terms of how to uh, create uh, bullion investment grade gold and how to transact in it and how to vault it. And there is a number of guides, guidelines they produce. And this is one of the standards uh, that is used uh, in, in, the, in the world of uh, investment gold. So currently there is no blockchain law in the UK. However, it's, I think it's in the early stages and uh, of, uh, in its um, ascent to the law. 
And uh, I think there's already a bill which is under consideration and it's, it's expected to be passed into a law quite soon. So as pretty much everyone knows, the UK has a really well-developed financial services. There are very interesting uh, startups, uh, fintechs, as well as uh, banks, gigantic banks, such as uh, the HSBC bank uh, that provide good services. Uh, that said, you have to always check whether uh, a bank that you want to use works uh, with blockchain because they still have uh, some outdated and antiquated perception that uh, blockchain is used for money laundering and things like that. So I have to be very, very clear uh, on that. Uh, in the UK, there is 0% VAT on investment gold, but however, there is VAT on jewelry gold and other similar kind of gold. So if, for example, you invest on gold, uh, you know, there are, there are projects that use uh, jewelry as investment gold, so they produce uh, gold as uh, jewelry, uh, which is uh, high sort of 18 carat jewelry, but you could return it back or sell, but you need to be aware that uh, VAT could be charged on such transactions. Uh, also, there are excellent voting and transportation facilities, uh, well-developed and uh, legal and accounting services, but they're a little bit more expensive uh, comparing to our other jurisdictions, they could be more expensive. And uh, the ease of doing business uh, rank is eight, according to the World Bank review. So the next one is a bit of a generalistic uh, slide, the European Union. So in general, securities are regulated by the European Securities and Market Authority, uh, golden uh, options and various other gold, gold back securities could be treated as such. So uh, you need to be careful about how you uh, do this. Uh, security trading is regulated by MIFU II regulation. Uh, and they, uh, I think they're about to uh, uh, in, implement the blockchain law uh, within it, uh, as well as additional uh, statutory acts uh, defining how uh, blockchain uh, is uh, could be used uh, in, in securities. Um, there is zero VAT on investment gold. Uh, there is a capital gains tax at the individual level and uh, uh, in all the major jurisdictions such as Luxembourg, uh, it's levied uh, and that you should also be aware of that because uh, in essence, uh, you need to look whether uh, it's charged uh, at which level it's charged, because some, in some cases it could be it could be necessary to do the special reporting on on the capital gains tax, and uh, then we have a ease of doing business rank: Luxembourg seventy two, Germany twenty two, uh, France thirty two, Ireland twenty four, Netherlands forty two, Belgium forty six, Cyprus fifty four. It's just circling back to what I said before. As you can see, Luxembourg is seventy two. Uh, however, it could be very attractive from the tax uh, point of view uh, for certain types of um, uh, business entities. Uh, so uh, the, the, these ratings should be taken you know, with a grain of salt. So Switzerland, um, th this is, uh, Switzerland is uh, associated with gold. Uh, it's a uh, I think it's one of the leaders in terms of the uh, gold reserves, uh, private and state. Um, all gold securities are in, this, in Switzerland are regulated by Stock Exchange and Securities Trading Act. Uh, there are also provisions uh, made in the Code of Obligations as well, which is on a more generalistic level. Um, tokenized securities, are, they have a they have a legal framework uh, for blockchain, the blockchain law. Uh, they have different classifications of token, including asset token. Uh, the tokenized securities are regulated by FINMA. So if you tokenize gold is considered as such, you would need to receive an approval from FINMA. And important thing to understand that they don't accept any submissions uh, in English. It would have to be in uh, German, French, Italian, or Romance, as I understand. Um, they have a really well-developed financial services. Uh, capital gains tax, in some cases, is not levied, and the ease of doing business rank is 36. 
But again, uh, each individual case needs to be assessed uh, depending on your business case. So Liechtenstein, um, so they, they, it's a very similar situation to Switzerland. However, they, they, uh, I think it's one of the first countries in Europe that uh, passed their blockchain law. Um, uh, their VAT on investment gold is uh, 0% and uh, CGT is, is in, in most cases is not, is not charged. So the USA, all gold securities are regulated by the uh, SEC. Uh, and uh, tokenized securities as well. So that could be, uh, when you tokenize securities, that actually could be a good uh, business case to do trading on, um, on uh, an alternative trading system, you know, uh, ATS, uh, that Richard just mentioned, uh, sorry, uh, that was mentioned earlier. Uh, there is zero uh, sales tax on gold. Uh, but uh, they uh, on the f uh, but they could believe it in some states, but mostly they don't charge. Uh, there is a capsule gains tax, uh, so this is something that uh, uh, when you approach it as a market, this is something that should you should you should be aware about. And the ease of doing business rank is six, so it's it's uh, supposedly a very easy country to do business in. Canada, all gold securities are regulated by, by the Canadian regulator, uh, including tokenized. Uh, there is no sales tax and CGT is quite high. Um, and uh, these of doing business rank is uh, 23. So Brazil, uh, Brazil, uh, the, 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 the also all the securities are regulated. Um, including the tokenized securities, uh, there is one percent uh, value-added tax, and uh, but it's quite a low ease of doing business rank. So United Arab Emirates, it's a very interesting jurisdiction uh, because although the securities are regulated by the central uh, uh, bank and the uh, uh, by the Emirates Security and Commodity Authority. The physical gold is not nearly as regulated, and currently they they I think I think they just going to release the blockchain law soon, or maybe it has been released recently. I I, I remember that it's it's just about to happen, or just happened quite quite recently. Uh, they charge five percent VAT on uh, investment gold, but there is no capital gains tax at all, and the ease of doing business. Uh, rank is 16 so it's not particularly difficult to do business there singapore again everything is regulated uh, and uh, tokenized gold must be a, uh, must seek approval from the regulator however there is no vet no cgt there are very good voting facilities um uh, very developed banking sector and the ease of doing business rank is just two Japan, uh, so uh, everything again is regulated. There is a 8% uh, consumption tax on gold uh, and the ease of doing business is 29. It's quite a specific uh, jurisdiction. However, you could still do uh, business there, but uh, I think it would be more Japan centric. Hong Kong, um, so uh, again, uh, both uh, gold securities and tokenized gold is, uh, regulated by the regulator. There is no VET or CGT. Uh, however, the ease of doing and ease of doing business rank is three. So it represents quite an interesting jurisdiction to do business. It's a big banking center, it's well developed. Uh, financial services are well developed. You could find any kind of skill you want and uh, Hong Kong would be a very interesting jurisdiction to operate in. So in conclusion, uh, each jurisdiction has its own pros and cons. Uh, and uh, it's very, even before you go to a legal professional, before, you know, when you construct your idea, when you formulate your idea, it's very important to do your research and to understand how uh, a particular process uh, that is a part of your business would function. Uh, within that particular jurisdiction, you know, whether you deliver physical gold, whether you do transactions, do you need a special depository, um, a special, uh, you know, special, uh, 
do, doing the special financial facility to deposit and process payments because in some jurisdictions uh, in order to uh, do special accounting you need to uh, you know you need to uh, use special facilities you need to register uh, with special uh, central securities depositories uh, or you you know you need to understand whether there are limitations uh, on um, on transportation of gold whether you could sell physical gold and uh, in essence you need to take all of that into account even before you go and speak to a legal professional all of this is available online and once uh, you understand this then you could realize uh, all of these uh, functions and features through technology and create a very interesting gold tokenization project so um, uh, aligning your business vision uh, with the regulation, uh, so taking into account all the potential risks and uh, merging it with the technology and realizing the vision. So I think I'm, uh, I've finished. So if, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you so much, Alex. And yes, that's right. Uh, as you noticed uh, during your very insightful um, speech that um, it, um, it's a very good tip always to go to a professional and to ask for legal advice. And uh, as one of our guests has noticed, for example, in Canada, the provin uh, provincial regulators differ from province to province. So uh, I think that applies to most regions. It's always a good idea to double check with a professional and to see what specific regulations each area has. Yes, uh, the, 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 the point was that uh, they, um, uh, when you do um, plan your project, you need to take into account not only taxation, but all of those little aspects before you go into even business planning, because all of these steps incur costs, development costs, setup costs, as well as procedural steps that you need to take and a lot of effort in order to describe it so uh, these are very important issues to resolve before you even start you know so mm -hmm. it's important um, just to have an overall understanding before you go to a legal professional whether it's even feasible or not within that particular jurisdiction and again circling back given that we live in this information age you could actually Change, uh, change the jurisdiction for your idea if you do the necessary uh, research ahead of the uh, before you actually start working out your financial models and all the other necessary things for a good business plan. Very true, very true. Also, one of our guests, Sonia, has a question. Maybe she would like to voice it out loud to us and join us. Sonia, hi. Hi, Sonia. Oh, hi. Thank you so much for your presentation. Really appreciate this. Um, uh, it was uh, really lovely. Thank you so much. So uh, my question is, uh, in, I'm based in the United Kingdom and I'm thinking to create a gold token for my uh, jewelry website. Um, and um, in the United Kingdom, uh, blockchain isn't FCA regulated or anything. So uh, like you said in your presentation that uh, it, does it have to be regulated by the lbma no lbma i mean for jewelry is, is a separate topic because uh london bullion market association in essence provides the framework for the investment gold trading so in essence if you got ingots or bullion you know with the with the with the markings and the the serial numbers that's lbma if you do other kinds of gold this is a different matter because um, if you talk about jewelry, even if it's investment jewelry, uh, you know th that that could be an entirely different matter. If you uh, if you uh, get a, an approval from them to present it as an investment gold, uh, then you need yeah. to uh, follow their guidelines. Okay, I see. That's great. Thank you so much. Appreciate your answer. Thank you. Again, you should always seek legal help. Uh, what I'm saying is from the business. Uh, yeah. consulting point of view you should always be aware of these things before you actually have the before uh, you you start you know writing up your business plan because in, yeah. in this particular case it's a highly regulated area and it's very important to uh, have a good understanding how things would work because otherwise you would spend a lot of time just to realize that it's not feasible from from the regulatory point of view i see thank you so much mm.
Great, thank you. And um, also maybe one last question. Uh, just in general, uh, we had received such a question as, um, if one uh, gets tokenized gold, uh, is that gold insured? And what actually happens if the company who sold it goes out of business? Well, the gold remains an asset. And if the company goes out of business, it goes through bankruptcy. You could have uh, the gold supposed to be vaulted some way. You know, the company can't just uh, say, well, it's in my safe because uh, there should be a, a special vaulting facility that keeps the gold. And uh, if, the, if the company is liquidated, then it goes through the usual bankruptcy steps uh, and a liquidator is appointed or the, the record of, uh, uh, of uh, persons uh, whom the company owes money to is, is being made and then they're, they're prioritized and uh, claims are made and uh, the publications and legal uh, cassettes are made. And so it goes through a regular step. However, uh, the gold at, at the vaulting facility is always insured because otherwise there wouldn't be a vaulting facility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Understood. Uh, we just received one more question. Alex, uh, do you have an opinion on Texas gold? Uh, I don't know, to be honest. There are plenty of uh, gold um, projects going on at the moment. And I think it's a very uh, promising area. And uh, but it, Paxos has, a, has got a bit of a good reputation, for, in, my, in my opinion, and they, they're actually making a lot of strategic moves uh, in order to sort of, uh, at, at one point, uh, just uh, uh, all of the components that they're trying to make uh, sort of will gel together and represent the one ecosystem that uh, would work uh, to the best of its capacity. But uh, as with any system, the strength of the system depends on the uh, quality and quantity of the of the of the of the participants within the system. So if they manage to attract uh, lots of uh, people, the system would become stable. But again, whether it would become um, widely spread, uh, it's it's up really to them. Thank you. Thank you so much.